Whoa, cuddling people, cuddling boy. Hey guys, what? for how many more years are you guys going to cuddle like this? Twelve. Twelve years and then that's it? No more cuddles? Or is it like forever? Forever. Together forever. <laughs> oh, Kai guys are asleep, guys. We have been parents for five years now to two beautiful biracial children. The thing is, Logish, he's Malaysian, and I'm American, and we are raised completely different, totally different cultures that we bring into our parenting style. So to be perfectly honest with you, we have made a lot of mistakes and have had a lot of failures in raising our children. So today, I want to share some of those with you guys so that you can learn from our mistakes and you don't have to make the same ones. Okay, so this first one is a heavy one. It's something that we both still disagree upon. Uh, it's sleep training. For those of you who don't know, sleep training is the practice where Americans would let their baby cry until they fall asleep. Uh, and to a point until you know they're comfortable sleeping by themselves in their separate room in the dark. I was very open to the idea initially, and we did that with both our kids actually, but I've seen varying different results. There are days that it worked great, and there are days that it was horrible. I personally think sleep training is not the way to go. That's my conclusion. I would disagree that I did enjoy when I did have those wonderful night sleeps, and it has taught them more independence, and now they are sleeping better because they're getting older, but could we have done things differently? Probably. And I don't know what the right answer is with sleep training or not. But I have to admit, it is nice those nights that we do have the boys with us, like getting the cuddles and the sweet time mm -hmm. with them. So for this one, we actually really don't know which is the best way, but I personally don't think I would do it again if we had another kid. I'm, I'm not so sure about that. Like doing it or not doing it? About do I think I would do it again. Oh. Okay. Okay, so Logish is inside with the boys and it is almost Father's Day. I know we've been talking a lot about parenting and Logish is a wonderful dad, so we want to celebrate him and do something a little special. So I have just the perfect thing. Okay, so the lights are all up now. Uh, I just have to wait for the sun to go down more uh, before bringing Logosh out for the big surprise. Ready? Open your eyes, say, surprise, Daddy! Whoa! Surprise, Daddy. Happy Father's Day! What's all this? We set up a very special Father's Day barbecue party for you. Check out these lights, they're so cool. Oh yeah, look at that. Here, I wanna show you how to, I wanna show you how they work. All right, so there's actually an app and you can go into it and look at this. Okay, so we set up a special Father's Day. Check it out. Whoa. We did blue because we know how much you like blue. Okay, something else that's so cool is what's called the dream view function. And what it does is it syncs up all the lights, right? So say you wanna decorate for, I don't know, Christmas. You hit that and look, all the lights are synced to match the theme of it. Whoa. Is that not the most magical thing? That's amazing. I actually have one more surprise for you. Okay. What's going on here? Here, take this, take this. Oh. Okay, come on. Whoa. Whoa, you're yeah. making steak? Yeah. You don't want me to cook it? No, don't worry. I got this. I actually am using the Gobi meat grilling thermometer, which gives me a super accurate reading, so it doesn't burn. Oh my goodness. Wow, that's super cool. So you guys, give your family a unique and exclusive Father's Day experience with Gobi products. We're gonna leave all the product details and a Father's Day deal in the description box below. Okay, so for the second one, it's primarily, I feel like, 
my fault and the failure on my end. The thing is, we have not trained our kids to be bilingual as much as they could have been. Um, I speak two and a half language. I speak, I guess, I speak English, I speak Malay, and I speak some Tamil. Uh, the thing is, we haven't, or I haven't really done a good job in like, talking to the kids a lot in those languages. We have done a lot of like days where we teach the kids specific things to say, or when we go out, we're like, oh, this is uh, pisang, that's banana, you know, or uh, bola is ball, whatever it is, right? We, we, we tell them on the go, but it's never been like- Intentional. Intentional. So right now, I feel like they're not great at it. They have no conversation skills whatsoever. They can count and they can recognize certain words. Um, and part of it is also on me. I can understand and speak quite a bit of Malay, but it's so much easier to communicate in English that I think both of us just default to that. So, mm -hmm. we, yeah, we haven't made it as much of a priority. Right, but but the boys are still young, so there's still time, and we are going to try to do better with this. So if you speak multiple languages, speak to them from young because they pick it up really fast. Little sponges at this age. Hey boys, where are you? Guys, you guys ready? Yeah. It's time to go. Hey Kai Kai, I got a question for you. What is your number one most favorite food from Malaysia? Mochi dinner. Really? What is number two? I don't know. You don't know? Yeah. So you like roti chanai? Yeah. Okay, okay. Zeze, do you know any Malay words? Yeah. Okay, what is it? Tell me one. Satu. <gasps> Okay, then? Dua. Then? Tiga. Mm -hmm. And pot. Mm -hmm. Lima. Mm -hmm. And up. Mm -hmm. Tujo. Mm -hmm. La pot. Mm -hmm. Tipi one. Mm -hmm. Super one. Okay, okay, not bad, not bad. Okay, come on, let's go. Let's go, we gotta go to I... Makan lunch. Uh, hey, ow! Oh. Hey, Kai Kai. You ready to eat lunch? Yeah! Okay, I let's go. Another thing is, since we live in America, our boys are exposed to American culture every single day. Just like a little sprinkle of Malaysian culture here and there, but overall they are very Americanized. We do our level best to try to bring in Malaysian culture, um, especially one thing we do is we take them to Malaysia once a year. So they get that exposure, but it's not the same. In an ideal world, we would split it 50-50, they would be full, American, full Malaysian, but it doesn't work like that. Yeah, and what I've noticed is that there are a lot of things that they're very, very American in nature because of the culture and their upbringing here and the things that they're exposed to here. Unf you know, it's fortunate and unfortunate. I wish they had some of the Malaysian values that I bring, but it's one of those things that they won't get to experience living here. So hopefully those like yearly travels will help some. Okay, so in all the failures, we do have one really great success. And this is primarily because from young, actually until now, both kids, we have never given them sugar. Processed sugar. No processed sugar. So they can eat fruits, they can eat any they can eat anything natural, but we don't give them any like sweets, chocolates, ice cream, none of that. And because of that, the positive thing that came out of that is that they eat everything right now. You know, most things, most things, most you know. Things. They're very good eaters. And from young, they're adventurous eaters. So whenever I give them like Malaysian food or spicy food or curry or anything, they're willing to try. And actually their current favorite food is sushi. And they will eat raw fish like none other. Yeah, and so it has made it so easy as they were growing up because we don't have to make separate meals for them. They share the same meals that we have. Like right now, we ordered like the same two chicken rice and nasi lemak. We all just share as a family. And that's great because the boys eat that too. Uh, eventually, we will introduce sugar to them. You know, I think it's inevitable. But the fact that we didn't give them from young, 
really, really helped. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing, I don't know if it's a failure, I think this is a big win actually, because Americans, what is what I, from what I've learned, they don't bathe their children every day. And I thought that's very, very challenging. So I told Rachel, we had a conversation like, hey, for our children, we have to bathe them every day because I know kids love to play, they'll get dirty, they get stinky. I cannot send them to sleep even a day without taking a shower. And I think this is kind of where we did compromise a bit because yeah, here in America, kids, depending on the family, take a bath every couple days. Um, in Malaysia, I feel like they take a bath in the morning when they wake up and at night before they go to bed. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was way too much yeah so we take one one bath a day one here. bath right before they go to bed because they are stinky it, and gross. it is colder here so you don't really sweat so much mm -hmm. but still the kids get stinky and so when hearing that some parents will only bathe their kids like once a week no nobody's once a week i think i know someone mm. <laughs> you know i'm just saying mm. but less frequently than every day let's put it that way Ooh. You guys ready? There's a special event happening for you guys. I think I know what the event is. You know what the event is? What is it? What is it? No, I said I think I know. Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is or not, baby Dayuns? Okay, let's go. Come, hold my hand. Is it? You got it, baby? Oh, look how flat you got yours, my love. No, no, no. Oh, you want that one? What is this? I think it's a Pachycephalosaurus. Is that a Pachycephalosaurus? I thought his head was a little different, but maybe you're right. Really push down its feet. Push down at the, at the feet, yeah. Oh, there you go. Like this? Okay, push it down. Good... <gasps> you made a fossil. You coloring is it, Kai Kai? Parasaurophilus. So one thing that we haven't emphasized a whole lot with the boys growing up is education and really carving out time to sit down and work on reading and writing and math. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that I think is more emphasized in Malaysian culture. Yeah, Malaysian and Asian culture, obviously education is such a huge piece. Even my mom and dad are constantly telling me, Logish, boys, sit with them, teach them and all that. And we've done, we've not done a good job with it. We've not done a lot of it. We've, we've done a little bit here and there. They, they have textbooks here and there, but we don't have a routine set schedule to do that. Mm -hmm. I think most of our learning happens through play and through activities. Um, thankfully, Which is more of the American style. That is much more the American style. And thankfully, especially Zayden has responded to that really well and can read and can understand yeah, a lot. He's such a boy genius and he's so smart. And we are kind of shocked that even with so little emphasis put on education and you know, he's just learning through play and through his preschool. He's picked up so fast. I do wonder though, if we ever actually put so much emphasis, he may be like boy genius. But like, I'm concerned if we put too much pressure on him, then he's gonna hate it and not wanna do it. So I but, think, what do you think? I, th I think there's a balance. But pressure makes diamonds. Mm. Okay, so this next thing here has been a constant struggle and challenge uh, in our parenting style, mainly because of our upbringing. Uh, and it's in the way of how we communicate to our children. So there's basically this. It's the spectrum between being highly critical to very, very encouraging, right? And Asians in my upbringing, you, you tend to be more on this side of things, more on the hype, more on the hypercritical side and the American parenting style, it's more on the very encouraging style. It's, it's somewhere between that scale, right? So I'm constantly leaning towards more critical to mean I'm trying to, uh, whenever the kids achieve something or whenever they do anything, I'm like, eh, I think you can do better. I think there's always a chance to improve and grow and be better because I want to make them the best 
possible versions of themselves. But on the other hand, I am way more on the very encouraging side because I want to reward all those little tiny moments because I want them to feel successful and do more and not feel so like down on themselves all the time. So I'm very encouraging and very positive constantly like, wow, that was great, buddy. Awesome job. Nice try. Um, versus trying to push them to be better, I am encouraging where they're at. Yeah, and and I sometimes struggle with that because I see a you know, when the boys come back or they do something in my eyes or in my point of view a very menial task, and I'm and she's like, great job, buddy. I'm like, no, the guy just ate a, a chicken bone or whatever. It's like that's <laughs> that's like whatever you know. That's normal. That's what we do all the time. It's food, you know, and so all in all. There's no right or wrong answer here. I think we need to find the balance. I think we need to be critical in moments so that we can bring out the best in them. But at the same time, you want to be encouraging. So we are trying our best to find where that's, you know. Yeah, and I'd say we fail at that all the time. We do. But it's parenting is constant learning. 